What's up, everyone? Welcome back to episode four of Kind of Different, a podcast where we talk about innovation, connection, and making dental care more human. Uh, I'm Matt Allen, the CEO and co-founder of Different Kind, and I'm your host. And I am super, super excited to have with me today Teresa Williams from Dental Express in the San Diego area. Uh, just a really amazing leader when it comes to thinking about a lot of different things from an operations perspective and how that in, impacts cl uh, clinicians and patients, et cetera. Um, really enjoyed getting to know Teresa over the years. So Teresa, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Matt. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited about this work you're doing in this space, you know, really helping us stay dialed back into what's the, what's going on for the patient. Mm -hmm. I think um, this is why we got into it. We wanted to help people and, you know, putting those people that were helping first in all of our decisions, I think, um, really makes it nice when we go home at the end of the day and be really proud of the work that we do. That's a great way of putting it. I love that. Well, for our listeners who may not know you, you you are you have a lot of uh, big you know things that are happening in your life and your career, whatever. Uh, would love for you maybe just to kind of fill us in a little bit on what you do daily, where you do it, and you know anything that you want to highlight about about your career. Okay, so I um I've been in this industry about twenty six years. Um, primarily um, in the de novo space, you know, I've been I've been doing this for long since before we called it a DSO. Mm -hmm. I've been opening dental practices and helping helping get them going, helping put the right people in place and um, service patients. I've been in San Diego for the last seven years. We came out here to start Dental Express, and we are a group of practices, um, general dentistry practices. So not a lot, not specialty, kind of the super generalist model. We see kids, we see adults. We do molar root canals. We take teeth out. <laughs> we, we do a little bit of, of everything. And um, we're, we're at about 110 employees right now. And I'm um, growing, growing every day. It's been exciting um, what we're doing out there. We do what, what we call for you about you dentistry. Mm. And it's really entering the operatory as a clinician without a preconceived idea of what's best for that patient. Um, you get in there and you meet the patient first and you co-discover it with them. And um, really, they really help you see what's best for them. And that's, that's kind of a neat thing to do. Um, a little bit different take on the ideal treatment plan. And it takes some moxie. You've got to be able to pivot. Um, you got to kind of put your own ego aside a little bit. Um, and so it's, it's, it's fun because it is down and, down and dirty with the patients, you know, really being on a journey with them and forming those relationships that make this so rewarding. Oof, man, so much in there that I love co-discovery, uh, man, co-planning, co-designing, right? Like all of those words. I, th I think we could talk a lot about that because I think <laughs> dentistry could. historically hasn't done that, but um, we have three kind of categories to jump into today. We talk about innovation, connect a little bit with you because you're super awesome, have a lot, you know, just that I think our listeners would benefit learning about you and then making dental care more human. Is there any of those specific topics that you want to start with? Uh, in a true, like, hey, you you pick what works best for you kind of spirit. You know, what, what, I think innovation is always great and, and really cool. And it's something at being later in my career that, um, you know, you, you think you're innovative and then you realize you've been doing the same thing the same way for about 20 years. <laughs> and, um, and so it's one of those that makes us take pause and say, I'm that old gal in the corner that's afraid to change. And so <laughs> that's been my mantra, I'd say, for the last, especially through through COVID, last 24 months. Yeah. is I'm going to be innovative. I'm going to be open, open to change and open to moving the cheese. And Perfect. so I'd love to hear what your take is on it. Well, yeah, let's start there then. Um, so your current role, uh, chief operations officer for Dental Express. So you are mm -hmm. operationalizing lots of different things, helping all, you know, helping all of us as clinicians to make sure that things can happen in the chair, et cetera. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about, because I think we spend a lot of time in dentistry, just thinking about quality uh, from a mm -hmm. number of different perspectives. But as clinicians, I think we have historically been trained to think about that from like a, you know, what does my restoration look like or whatever, which is a part of quality, but it's a small part, I think, um, and a mm -hmm. very narrow part. And I think the operational definition of quality is really interesting. Um, my, in, You're an innovator in this space, and I, I'm curious mm -hmm. to, you know, walk us through a little bit of how you are operationalizing quality at Dental Express and, and how you think about that concept in general from an operations perspective. Absolutely. So quality is like beauty and is in the mi mind of the beholder. And dentistry, I'd say for as long, you know, I've been in, at this a little over 25 years, um, dentistry's definition of quality has been in the, in the mind of um, the dentist. Mm. If the dentist thought, if 10 dentists in a room said it was that you did a good job, then you did a good job. And that's, that's how, if you needed to escalate things, or you need a peer review board, 
the peers or the other dentists or who did, got to decide if it was quality work. Mm -hmm. And medicine was that way for a long time. You know, I have a little bit of a background in healthcare law mm -hmm. and quality as defined in medicine is a little, it's a little bit of everything. It's how did the patient feel about it? How did the dentist peers feel about it? Did it work? Did we have to redo it? How did the, the auxiliary and the nurses, the people working there, how did they feel about it? Mm -hmm. And so it's a, the actual quality of a procedure of care was an amalgamation of all of these competing stakeholders in the care. And so I think as we become more innovative and dental and we kind of, we, you know, we're a few steps behind as we follow what medicine did, um, it's a given, it's got to work. The physics have to be there. Your bridge has got to draw. Um, <laughs> that's a given, but the patient had to like you. The patient had to feel good about how clean the office was. They had to feel great about their insurance coordinator and how the financial part of it went. They had to be able to they feel like they could afford it. And, you know, those things really impact the success of, I would say, not only the practice, but of the care. So they impact the success of the practice and that the patient's going to return and continue a relationship with the practice every six months, year over year, when they happen to have an issue. But it will also impact the success of the care given because the patient trusts you to do what you said. Mm. They trust you to take care of it. They trust you that you're right, I'm going to have to replace those fillings at some point. I, I, I kind of see what you're saying. And um, and if they didn't like you or they didn't like your office or they didn't like your insurance coordinator, they never even got a chance to take advice. And so when you look at quality, it all, it all comes into play. Then if you pepper in, you know, Medicare is talking about paying for dental, they're going to expect that. Mm. What are your patients' reviews saying? You know, how you made them feel? What does Glassdoor say about you with your employees? Mm. Um, those things are directly going to impact how much you got paid for that bridge. Your fee schedule for the bridge is going to be predicated on how much they like you, not how good, how good the bridge fit. Mm. And it's really, it blows the minds of clinicians that no longer do they have to just be clinical, clinically competent. That's the baseline. It's these soft skills are coming into play and they've got to, They've got to have core values, stand by them, celebrate them in their offices um, in order to truly give quality care. Oh, man. So, so much there that we could go deeper on. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, we could do a whole podcast, right, on like the coming era <laughs> of alternative payment and, you know, what that looks like in dentistry. Value-based care is coming, guys. Yeah, um, how, when you... how Medicare Advantage thinks about their star ratings and what they're, mm -hmm. you know, currently measuring on and what does that mean mm -hmm. for the future of dentistry. We could totally do a lot there. But I just love how you're bringing in you know, the patient perception of, you know, what, what their care is to quality, which is there's certainly that there's safety, right? There's all these different elements mm -hmm. that I think we just miss, right? And you, you know, as, as an operations person are just responsible for like measuring all of that and figuring out how to improve it, which I think is so mm -hmm. helpful uh, because clinicians tend to get a little bit focused, right? And you're able to take it all mm -hmm. in and say, hey guys, we're, do we're doing all of it. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. I love and, it, and it's an intentional thing. You know, it, it is definitely an environment and a culture you have to build in your, in your practices. Um, one of the things we say in our interviews, you know, we're just meeting someone the first time is what am I, what is one of my favorite things about working here? What am I most proud of that we do? And I don't think we talk about those things enough. You know, we may feel them. We know, know them. We may not really put our finger on why do I come back here every single day to work here? Yeah. And it's important to share that, those things with people early on. So they can start to identify, well, I'm proud of that too. That's why I want to work here. And then they, they have, they have something to actually talk to their patient about, you know, then he's, he's a good doctor. His temporaries don't come off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, they can, they can, they can really um, expand that definition of quality for the patient. I love that. I love that. I'm going to come back to that. Like, what am I most proud of? Cause that's actually a question that I want to ask you in the connection section, mm -hmm. but you mentioned COVID earlier and I want to quickly come back to that because obviously COVID has just shifted the landscape for everyone when it comes to innovation. Um, you know, no, no one wanted COVID to happen here. We all are dealing with it. Uh, and so mm -hmm. we're trying to find the best in it wherever we can. Uh, and so what's one of the things that you feel like, you know, silver lining from COVID that you feel like, wow, this has brought some innovation to dentistry uh, in a way that I'm really grateful for. Uh, that maybe wouldn't have happened so quickly otherwise? What's one of those things that you see that's you know, happened at Dental Express? You're like, wow, that wouldn't have happened without COVID. So I feel like prior to COVID, we had a dichotomy in our, in our patient base. So we had patients that were really forward thinking with technology and they wanted it. They wanted online appointments. They wanted me to text them. They, they wanted to communicate with me through a chat box. And then we had another sector of patients that were really resistant. And I would say you, we even had a sector of employees that felt that way mm. and a sector of employees that were really resistant um, because they're like, it's not broken. Why should I fix it? I like the paper, you know, that, this so we had, we were trying it. to serve two masters going into COVID. 
Yeah. We were trying, you know, we did some things with, oh, we're going to email you about your appointment. You can text me, but you don't have to, you don't want to, I'm still going to call you. Right. You know, there were things, we were trying to serve two masters and COVID, they accelerated that to where my grandma can use a QR code to order tacos. <laughs> So, so if, if my grandma can do that to order tacos, she might be able to use her cell phone to tell me what her health history mm. and COVID accelerated that for us and made it, um, they it kind of, the gloves were off. Employees were no longer afraid of disappointing patients that didn't want to do it. And the patients were no longer resistant to it. So you, we didn't have these teams of these dental teams needing to have two different platforms that they had to carry to serve all patients. And so I think there was a silver lining. That was probably it. It pushed everyone forward with technology. You know, I mean, you're carrying your vaccine card around digitally on your phone. Um, I never did that with a flu vaccine or any kind of vaccine. <laughs> so um, I, I appreciate that. It also helped me to believe in our patients a little bit more. That they're a little bit more adaptable than we gave them, than we gave them credit for. Totally, I love it. Yeah, for sure. My like grandmother's uh, great grandmother's like eighty six year old like friend the other day was just talking about how she was like getting her you know jitterbug set up or whatever. I'm like, see, yeah, like for sure, mm -hmm. people can do it, right? When we they uh, can, yeah, they can. So mm -hmm. love it. Um, okay, let's move on to. Um, connection because I think, you know, again, I, I've just enjoyed our conversations together and I love that idea of, hey, what are you most proud of? Um, mm -hmm. Tell me something, you know, in your life that, you know, maybe related to Dental Express, but I would also love, you know, something in your life that maybe not related to Dental Express of like, mm -hmm. hey, this is what I'm really proud of in, in you know, my mm -hmm. personal life or something like that too. So, well, I have two grown daughters, one's 21 and one's 19, and I'm very, very proud of them. Um, you know, and that's it's really amazing when you have children and you can kind of see your own heart walk around outside your body and the different things that they can do. But I think that does tie back into our team at Dental Express. And I'm very, I'm very proud of the leaders that we've in the leadership environment that we've developed there. Um, and we we really work hard to teach them to see gifts and, and beautiful qualities in other people that they may not have in themselves and appreciate why everyone has a seat at the table and why you need everyone at the table. And I'm most, most proud when I see that in the leaders that work for me and I see them turning around and teaching that to others. So it's really, it really is a pay it forward um, type situation. We're learning to look at things from the same side of the fence. And we do that with our patients every day. You know, when you talk about empathy, that, um, you know, I have to remember this mom that's brought her three-year-old in with a toothache has never brought their three-year-old into the dentist office before. It's yeah. never happened. Yeah. It's their first time. We already know when they hit the lobby that this child is going to need to go to a pediatric specialist. You could hear it. They couldn't sit, <laughs> you know, and we know this. You know why? Because we do this all the time and, and we, we already know what's going to happen. But if we take pause, and I'm really proud of how we do this. And we think about mom's never done this before, and she's going to need us to go down that, that road with her. Yeah. She's going to need us to co-discover that with her for the first time that, that her child needs a specialist. Yeah. And we can't just expect her to trust us because we do this every day now, because mm -hmm. she's the expert on her child and she's the expert on her experience. Mm -hmm. And that's one example of um, how we like to work with our patients. And I'm really proud of how we do that, that we um, you know, don't just to finish the conversation without the other person. Yeah. So. Wow. That is so beautiful. And so, you know, yeah, obviously like their experience is their experience and, and we need to walk there with them. And I also love how you're talking about employee experience as well. You talked about it before as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can't provide that great experience for our patients if we don't, you know, if we're not really building a culture that matters and that means something. And that's mm -hmm. really kind of where I think my next question goes, because I think you're talking about this like amazing culture that you guys are creating at Dental Express. Um, and I think gratitude, you know, we've all learned through COVID, right? Mm -hmm. That like expressing gratitude is really mm -hmm. important for all of us and for our mental health and, you know, just for us to kind of keep going when things are tough. Um, what's one of the ways that you guys do that, that you think is fun or unique or something that you've just been, you know, happy to be a part of, uh, you know, at Dental Express in terms of, hey, this is how we like to express gratitude, or this is one way that we've thought about mm -hmm. it that, that I think has been interesting. You know, we, we like to celebrate our core values every Every week we have level 10 meetings in every practice. And one of the ways that we celebrate those is each employee will, will recognize when another employee demonstrated that core value mm -hmm. in another. And it has to be something specific that you saw them do in their workplace and be tied to a core value. So you can't, I can't just say, oh, Matt, 
he isn't, he's so empathetic. I'm going to recognize him for empathy. Yeah. Um, it has to be something specific of, you know, when I saw Matt opening the office today, there was a homeless man sitting outside and he stopped and had a conversation with them and, you know, and, and helped him, helped him along where he needed to go yeah. and didn't make him feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And Matt showed empathy to that person. And I, I really enjoy working with Matt because of that. Mm -hmm. And so we, we create those environments for employees to be recognizing that in each other and people like to be recognized. Go figure. They like to be recognized, and and then it, the behavior becomes contagious. Yeah. So then now everyone that opens the office when they see the homeless man, they're not yelling at him or calling security. They're treating him like a human, yeah. and that's just a good way to start the day. And so that's that's one of the things we like to do with in recognizing our employees. And um, you know, obviously, there you know, there's financial goals that a practice likes to meet. We found if we recognize those care goals, mm. those financial goals take care of themselves. Mm. And so we really put our money there. And, you know, there's usually a monetary re reward involved with if Matt was recognized for empathy, he would get a little gift card or something, you know, thank you for being that kind of person to work with. That's awesome. And um, so we've, when we focus there with our employees, the other stuff just falls into place. Totally. I, I absolutely love that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel I heard the story the other day of like, a, you know, companies having Slack channels, right, to do some things like that as well, right, or just, mm -hmm. you know, finding ways, but I love the specificity of it. And I think that there's mm -hmm. so much there that that really matters and is, is really very important. So thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that example. I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Which ties into my next, you're just doing such a good job of like pulling all the threads right here. Um, you know, the, the last section that we want to talk about is making dental care more human. And, you know, one of the core values of Dental Express, like you've mentioned, is empathy. I would love to hear your perspective on, you know, you've given us one way already that you're kind of operationalizing that for your employees. How do patients feel that operationalization of that specific kind of core value when they come into the office? What's one thing that you've kind of set up to ensure that that's actually mm -hmm. happening for your patients? So um, it starts really before they even come into the office. If they've, if they've called over the phone, um, you were really listening to the questions that they're asking. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot that they don't say that, you know, if you listen to what they're not saying in the beginning, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for example, you know, how much is a root canal, Matt? You know, you're not really looking for how much a root canal is. You, you'd like to know that. You, yeah. You're concerned that maybe you might not be able to afford a root canal or you're concerned that you might need a root canal or someone told you you need one. Yep. And, um, you know, and it's, and we like to do, we put a pin in it, you know, that's a great question, Matt, you know, let me, let me see what I can do to help you with that. Yeah. Um, how'd you hear about us? And I kind of need to get Matt talking to tell me about himself. Mm -hmm. I need him to, you know, kind of start to explain, tell me more. And we say, tell me more a lot, <laughs> you know, so tell me more about this root canal, you know, was it, was it for you or someone that you care about? Yep. Then Matt's like, oh, thank God you asked. It's my actually my daughter, and she's only twelve. You know, so then we, we kind of get to know each other a little bit more, yeah. and and you know, and then I could start to start finding how can we best help you, mm -hmm. and then then when we can help you, you know, obviously we're going to give the fee because we really believe in doing that. We don't want to invade your question, yeah. but we want really want to make sure you get to tell your story and we don't cut you off with too quick of an answer. <laughs> Oof, man. Oh, so much good there. Cut you off with too quick an answer, right? We know from studies that patients on average get interrupted every 11 seconds, which is just like, obviously not enough time to tell your story. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I just, and I love that. Tell me more, right? That's such a core tenant of just being curious and and really kind of saying, hey, look, like there is, you have some expertise. You have something to share with me uh, that I really mm -hmm. want to know. Tell me more is like one of my favorite questions. It's not really yeah. a question, I guess, but, you know, kind of in the English language of just like, hey, I'm curious, right? You have to be genuinely interested in new patients. Mm. And and we found um, you know, if, if someone's not genuinely interested in other people, they don't they're not they don't find a lot of success in our group. Mm. Um, but if you're genuinely interested and you have a real love for people, you're gonna have a good time at Dental Express because we're gonna <laughs> find out everything about them and they're gonna be coming back and they're probably gonna bring you cupcakes. You're gonna love it. <laughs> That is awesome. Um, okay, so last question here, just to kind of, you know, close it all up. I, I think one of the things that has really stood out to me in this conversation is how well you do the work that you do in preparation for that patient care time, right? Like so much of that is culture, so much of that is working with your employees. Um, and one of the things that I think is just so important for a non, you know, person who's not in the room with patients, right? So more operational mm -hmm. people um, is to really feel that um, kind of connection and really feel that, hey, this is the, the kind of direction that we're all working in together. Um, how do you mm -hmm. kind of take some of those 
uh, stories, some of those, the, the work that might happen in a room with a patient and ensure that like all your operational staff is feeling that, is understanding that, um, is taking that to heart so that it's like, hey, this is, this is what the, these interactions are going to look like and feel like, and we're all going to go home and feel like we've taken care of the patient instead of just here's the dentist or here's the hygienist who did the work today. Well, you know what, that, that's really neat that you put it that way, because, you know, we talked about our level 10 meetings that we do with our team. We do them with the clinical and the business office at the mm -hmm. same time. And, you know, I, there's some schools of thought of the dental assistants do not need to hear what new insurance we're contracted with. But there's also some schools of thought to think about what are they doing up, up front? You know, what are, what are these patients frustrated with? And so we really believe and everyone hears about all the issues and works to solve them together, because if we're only solving them from a clinical perspective, that operations or business office person may have a really good non-clinical view that's more patient-centric. And, and so we do bring the two groups together and the clinical team can help the business office team say, you know, you know, that I see why they don't like your narrative because this is what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we, we really try to do some cross-training and that they hear about the issues that we're solving together, not so much that they're working in cross departments, right, right. but that, that really helps in that respect. Yeah, I love that. I saw, you know, the, the, you may have seen this on LinkedIn recently, some story about some guy who worked for DoorDash, who was an engineer, you know, on the software side, and like, they have to go and actually like deliver food so they can see what it feels like. Yes, process, thank you. you. Know? And that guy was like, ah, I never signed up for this. But you can obviously see why they, mm -hmm. you know, make the team do that and why it looks like that, right? Because you do get a totally separate understanding of what it feels like both ways. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you have an understanding of what those other jobs look like. So I absolutely love that as well. That's fantastic. You know, I, I really am a firm believer, you know, when you look at these technologies that we have to help the engineers, you know, we're so dependent upon the technology and, and in our space, people would say, well, I just didn't like that software. It didn't do X, Y, and Z, yeah. you know, and I said, well, did you tell them why it needed to do X, Y, and Z, you know, instead of just looking that it didn't, it's, we're not in the world of going to get a widget off the shelf anymore. Things are dynamic and they're constantly being upgraded. And I think with your software companies, you have to pick, pick a partner that's going to hear you mm. and be interested in what it's like to deliver the food at Door, DoorDash. There you go. You know, I think that's a great example. There you go. I love it. Uh, well, Teresa, um, I absolutely love this conversation. I, I, we could spend all day talking. I feel like <laughs> I, I have so many questions for you. Um, in, in the interest of, of you know, keeping it short for our listeners, uh, going somewhere to drive, listen to one whole podcast, right? Um, can you give them some, you know, hey, maybe they live in San Diego and they're like, this sounds awesome. I want to you know, become a patient. I want to work there. I, you know, I just want to find out more about you. Can you just tell our listeners if they're interested in Dental Express or connecting with you at all? Um, where they absolutely. Might be able to we would we would love to get you know get to know you in San Diego. Our website is thedentalexpress.com. T h e d e n t a l e x p r e s s dot com. Um, you can book an appointment there. You can apply for a job there. I'd love to get to know you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, it's so great. And I love your logo, by the way, just like the, like, you know, trains in San Diego have such a deep and rich history there. And there's like all these songs that I love that are just, you know, so linked to, to the train. So I, I absolutely love your logo as well. Thanks, Matt. Thanks yeah. so much. It's been really fun visiting with you. Cool. Well, thank you for, for taking the time today. We appreciate you jumping on, um, look forward to, um, yeah, hopefully some of our listeners getting connected with you. And, uh, again, thank you for your time. We really, really appreciate it. Fantastic. We'll talk soon. Okay. 